Five with a car. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Good. Sure. Can we grab you? Sure. Oh, Terrific. Yeah, yeah. Eight years. I watch. Don't worry. I watch it. Oh, thank you. Yes, I do. Oh, no. oh. You say that on the air. <laughs> Hi. I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Your host, Avi Meyer, and the greatest cameraman of all, Sonny Hirsch. Marty, thank you so much. Anyway, hi everybody. Welcome to the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the World Wide Web at ntnm.org, where you can watch all of these shows shortly after they're on TV. And at this point, we're very proud to state that by the time this show airs, our 10,000th show will have been watched. And that is just so cool. Uh, to check out your local CAPS meeting, please go to CAPS24.org. And we always urge everybody to participate in community policing. It is my pleasure and privilege to have, in his second term, the commissioner of the Cook County Board for the 13th District, which is our area, Commissioner Larry Sufferton. How are Hi, you? Abby. Good to see you. It's good to be back. First of all, and good to see you. And, and you know what? You're, you're, you're very popular. All of a sudden, you're in our top. The show that was just on a month ago is already in our top ten of most watched shows. Well, that's, uh, that's exciting to know. You know, I, uh, th there's a big convention this coming weekend. We're taping this on August 1st, folks. But this coming weekend, there's a convention of people who use uh, the, the Internet and blog and use uh, uh, videos of cable shows to express issues to people and, and, and educate people. And I think that your show is one of those shows that uh, is a hidden jewel here in the community. And it, it's well regarded throughout the city. I, when I'm on one of your shows, I go to the far south side and people say, I saw you on TV last night. And I go, whoa, what was I doing? Then they say that you were on with Abby. You know? Okay, so cool. Everybody knows your first name. You know that I like. No, everybody knows yeah. the first name, or they call me, sometimes they call me the rabbi, but I'm not a rabbi well, despite you, the fact that I wear this. You're a lot like Madonna. You know, there, <laughs> you know, nobody knows your last name, but Abby, everybody, uh, everybody knows. Which is cool, and I do appreciate so I, you know, I, it. And I, by I the way, I, I should mention just real quick, because I know once you, you take the stage, you take the stage. But I just want to mention on the show that um, some of these some of my guests are bribed with fresh basil and vegetables from the backyard. Okay, <laughs> that's all. Well, and, and, and uh, as you can see from my size, those that basil and the fresh vegetables are very important to me. No, well, basil, I know you're a real appreciator of basil, and you were a restaurant well, tourist. I, you know, I'm a half Italian, and, and I owned Italian restaurants at one point in my career. So, uh, yes, I understand what basil can do to make a meal perfect. And by the way, I have higher regard for guests that take basil after the show than those who don't. Okay, that's, that, that, that's good. Well, it, it's good to be here, and it's always good to be able to talk to my Roger Park uh, constituents and the other people in the city of Chicago about what's going on at the county and what's going on just in general. Um, you know, we, we've just uh, uh, finished our last meeting until September of the county board, and at that meeting we were able to get uh, uh, COLAs, cost of living adjustments for 6,221 non-union workers to try to give them some fairness and justice in their pay. And, you know, we are struggling at the county. Um, I keep telling President Todd Stroger that the three things we need to be doing are, one, providing quality services and making sure our constituents understand that the service is good. Two, working on protecting the morale of our employees to motivate them to provide quality service. And three, having a vision for the future. So what we did yesterday by giving COLAs to the 6,221 non-union workers is really give some motivation to them and show them some respect. Now, COLAs are cost of living. Uh... Right. And, and for our prosecutor's office, uh, they will get eight, an 8% raise, and then they will get an additional 4.75 uh, next year. Which is for, really terrific considering how much they were bleeding. Yeah, and, and that's about uh, 1,100 uh, people total in the prosecutor's office, and then others will get about a 3% uh, cost of living raise and another um, 4.75 next year, and they'll get a $1,000 bonus. So, and, and those would be the non-lawyers and all the other people throughout the system. We also help the public guardians in the same way so that all of our lawyers now, the public defenders who are under a union contract, the state's attorneys, and the public guardians who are in courtrooms fighting for the people of this county are all now basically having parity in their uh, pay. There's still a, a few other things we have to do, but uh, Commissioner John Daly and Commissioner Mike Quigley and I negotiated with President Stroger over the last two 
uh, weeks, and we came up with $21 million, which we obtained from a bankruptcy settlement against U.S. Gypsum, and we were able to use that money to take care of our employees. Now we've got to do the hard work of trying to develop revenues for the future as we get ready for the 08 budget. And as people are seeing throughout the country, if you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Kentucky, or here in Illinois, getting budgets done on time is impossible. And we've seen governmental shutdowns in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. We hear people threatening it here in, in, in Illinois. Fortunately, we got a county budget. As you remember, it wasn't well, the budget I, I wanted, but it, 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 it's, we're functioning with it. Now we've got to get ready, and hopefully our negotiations on the COLAs will lead to good things in the budget in the future. Right, and by the way, one thing I'll leave. Well, okay, I was going to say something bad about Bogoyevich, but anybody who's watched the show knows I don't like him, so I'm not going to say Well, I, you know, unfortunately, I'm a county official, so I don't need to, to deal with no, uh, you, that oh, issue. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you know, one of the other things that... Well, I want, one thing I'm very happy with, by the way, is, is I saw in the paper about uh, the, the Stroger Hospital, the old yes. Stroger Hospital. One of the things that I started and on... And you've been a I big proponent of that from day one. Yes, we, we uh, stopped President John Stroger from demolishing the old hospital, the 1914 building, which is, is, is an important building, just as Jane Addams Hull House is on the west side. It, it is the only building that welcomed every ethnic and racial group that came to Chicago and treated them and treated their families. And uh, we've been able to preserve it, and President Todd Stroger came forth with a redevelopment plan, which we're going to consider in the next few weeks. And I think we have saved it so that it will be in productive use going forward for the people of this county and will save us a tremendous amount of money from having either to build a new building or uh, to try and rehab buildings that are not of the same uh, architectural quality as the 1914 building. So it's very satisfying when you start on a project. When I first stood up to John Stroger and said, I don't think we should vote for this, and I was able to get enough commissioners to defer it, and then I was able to get enough commissioners to defeat his proposal, um, it, it's gratifying to know that it does lead to something, though it's taken us five and a half years. So I'm, that, that is another uh, very positive thing. And it seems like it's going to be something that's also going to, to be able to align itself with all the different health care facilities within the area. Right. And, you know, the buildings are one thing, but the providing of health care is what those buildings are for. And one of the things we're still struggling with at the county is how do we provide health care for the many, many people who are without insurance? And even some of the proposals at the, at the state and national level for, for health care plans still leave a large number of people who need the safety net of some kind of hospital services and are not going to be covered by insurance plans. And, uh, you know, we are struggling at the county because of all the cutbacks, the things that I opposed when the, the budget passed, uh, to try to uh, maintain the quality of our services. I'm still struggling to try and get some kind of clinic up here. I've been working now with the Heartland Alliance Group to uh, bring a um, FQHC, a federally qualified health center, over on Tatui Avenue, uh, just like we have an Access One and St. Francis Clinic over on the Howard area. But, you know, we need, there are too many people in our community who small illnesses lead to big illnesses, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, who are not getting the screening for prostate cancer, for colon cancer, for uh, uh, breast cancer, mammograms. You know, we, we need to work very hard to try to uh, ensure the quality of health. We're the greatest nation in the world, and we're, we're, we're just not doing it for our own people. I very much agree with you on that, and as a matter of fact, that is the one point, one place where this country falls so far behind everybody else, it's not even funny. Um, Let and, me tell you about one other thing sure. that we did. Um, we passed a referendum, which will be on the February 5th ballot. Uh, as you know, I'm one of the uh, veterans who's on the county board. And, uh, the There's other veteran, another veteran? The other veteran is, is Mike Quigley. Uh, oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we passed a, uh, a referendum, which will be on your ballot, which said, should the federal government fully fund all health services for all veterans? And... Um, the full funding issue is a very important issue. We've just had the Secretary of uh, the Veterans Administration resign, Mr. Nicholson. We've had situations where the quality of care for our veterans coming back from Afghanistan and from uh, Iraq have been uh, not to the level that they should be. Uh, we're hoping that we are starting a movement. I did a press conference with the Lieutenant Governor Quinn, who's been very strong in this. We're, we're hoping the other 101 counties will join us in Illinois and other states. I've done radio shows now throughout the country with veterans groups, and this is a very important issue. And the way we treat our veterans 
is, 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 is as important as the way we treat our young and our old. It's a sign of respect for those who've done service for and, us. And actually with things like Agent Orange, not to mention some of the stuff that happened, um, happened in the early 90s when, when we went out you know, to, to, to Southeast Asia again, it is criminal to me. I'm not a veteran, but I can't imagine why this country can't take full care of the veterans and then some. Well, I, I agree. You know, I, I was not in Vietnam, but I was in the service during the Vietnam War and, and in 72 and 73. And it is clear to me that there are many people who the, the, their, their service time has put a burden on them and it made it difficult for them to function. And we owe those people a debt of gratitude for going over That's and right. doing it. Just as these young people, who, these men and women who are in, in, in a terrible situation in Iraq, and I hope that we'll be able to bring them home. I mean, one of the reasons we're having problems funding our health care system is President Bush has taken away from us $180 million in the last 18 months. That's bleeding our health care system at $10 million a month to use that money for the war. And uh, while it's important to have homeland security and to protect ourselves, not being in a, a position to provide health care for our own people is, is a crime. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, uh, see a change as we get a President Obama in uh, <laughs> next year and, and in 09. Because of President Obama, we will we'll be picked to be the Olympic site in 16, and you know we'll see a turnaround and and and, and something better for our people. Well, I tell you, how, first of all, this nation definitely needs to get out of the Bush leagues. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that, that's a very uh, apt statement, and, and I'm sure that it was an original thought. Uh, by the way, I never heard that particular phrase. I've heard many others, and you had a great joke before we went on the air. But uh... <laughs> I, well, my, my thoughts about President Bush are, are, are well known, and I, I don't need to make a joke. I mean, I think we will forever remember his mission accomplished, and, and um, uh, he has just so misled us and so mishandled so many things, and, and his lack of real interest in working with the international community. To, to really give us homeland security is, is, is the thing I think I'm most disappointed in. Um, He's not even capable of knowing what's right and wrong, but we should talk about you in the meantime because you've only got two minutes and one second okay. left. And you know what? First of all, we don't, one thing we don't know about is, is whether Dick Devine is running for re-election or not. And, and frankly, no offense, I really hope that you know, our, our good neighbor and friend on the show, Dick Devine, is running for re-election. But if he's not, um, there's actually a very interesting alternative sitting just to my left. Or well, on the right on the camera. <laughs> yeah, you know, Dick has been a friend of mine for a long time, and I, I speak to him often. I spoke to him this morning, and he is uh, going to make a decision with his family if he seeks uh, another term. He's been in office 12 years. If he chooses not to, my first alternative would be that he run for re-election. I think he's done a good job. There are difficult tests in that office. But uh, if he doesn't run, I, I do intend to run for state's attorney of Cook County. I... I, I've had the privilege as a lawyer to argue in the U.S. Supreme Court, the Illinois Supreme Court, try cases. I've tried over 130 juries to verdict throughout this country. Um, the law has given me a great opportunity to see if, what fair administration of, of, of our laws can do to improve the quality of life for people. And I would like to try to, res to deal with uh, justice issues in our community, both on the civil side, where I think uh, we can assist the Attorney General in issues with uh, utility reform, with uh, 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 people whose homes are being taken because of, of bad mortgages and debt that they're put into, uh, with health care issues, and then on the criminal side to make sure we're just not lock, locking up all our young people that we're trying to prevent crime. So well, hopefully I'll be able to come back to you in a few weeks if Dick has decided not to run, and I will be a uh, solid candidate and I'll be able to go through those issues with you. And by the way, you told me you were going to take up the first 1341, and you only took up 1339, which gives me 17 seconds left at this stage. Okay. So thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks, Sonny Hirsch, entire technical crew. If people want to call your office, they call. Call us in Evanston at 847-864-1209. Uh, we're at 820 Davis. Uh, we will do everything we can to service you on any issues you have in the forest preserves in the county. And I appreciate the opportunity to be your uh, representative. Thank you so much.